I'm going to go straight into the outline ledger system. So I'm going to introduce the main ledger and then two subsidiary ledgers, one for customers, uh, which is the sales ledger, and one for suppliers, which is the purchases ledger. Okay, the ledger system then. I've shown on the board something called a sales daybook and something called a purchases daybook. The point of the sales daybook is to organise your invoices that you send to your credit customers. This is where receivable information is kept. So, we send an invoice out to customer X for £200 plus VAT, total amount he owes us is £240. So we make that entry in the daybook when we send out the invoice and then we update X's account. So X's account is updated. 240, he's a receivable. Now, that entry is not part of the double entry system. It's just a record of the fact that we've sent an invoice to a credit customer called X. Same thing for Y. Y is done, uh, or we've sold to Y, £400 plus 80 VAT, £480 in total. So we're going to put 480 on Y's account. And similarly, we're going to put 960 on Z's account. Okay, so we've got a record of the individual amounts that each receivable, each customer, credit customer, owes to us. Then what happens is at the end of the period, it might be the end of the day, the end of the week, end of the year, whatever it is, at the end of the period, we then total the sales day book. So, total sales on there are 1,400. The total VAT is 280. 1680 is the total gross amount. And at the end of the period, we can then update the general ledger, the main ledger. So on the other board, I've shown some accounts from the main ledger. And the ones that are of significance, first of all, for this relevant to the sales day book, are sales, VAT, and receivables. So we've come to the end of the period. We've filled in the sales day book, we've updated the individual accounts for our records. Then we're going to do the double entry. So, from the day book, the total for receivables was 1680. So we'll update receivables 1680, which tells us at the end of this day or week, whatever it is, that we are owed 1680 from sales. The sales figure is 1400. 1400 records our income, 1400 sales, and the amount that we owe for VAT from the sales day book is 280. So the picture now then in the main ledger is that we are owed 1680. Although we're owed 1680, we can only take 1400 income because the other 280 will be collected by us but then paid over or owed to HMRC by way of tax. So the balances there indicate an asset for receivables, a current asset, income, sales of 1400, and a liability at that point of 280. Okay, so the purchase day book then, we've got the purchase day book details, and we can do pretty much the same as we did with the sales day book. We receive an invoice from supplier A, we update supplier A's account with the gross amount 120, we update B's with 240, and we update C's with 480. These are for our records so we can keep a check on who we owe and what we owe them. And then at the end of the period, end of the day, whatever it is, we're going to update the main ledger. Similar sort of thing, we total up the purchase day book, 700, 140, 840. So total up the, uh, the purchase day book, now enter into the main ledger. Purchases 700 pounds, purchases expense 700 pounds. VAT, I'm going to debit, I'll explain this in a moment. And payables, the amount we owe in total is 840 which I'll put there, 
Okay, now, I haven't referenced them up to the accounts, I'm just showing you where the numbers go here. So why is everything where it is? Purchases are an expense from the previous video clip, therefore debit. Payables are what we owe to our suppliers, that's why they're a credit. The VAT is something we can deduct from the originally established liability of 280. So VAT, if we'd only had 140 on the debit side there and there'd been no sale of 280, we came to the end of the period, then a debit balance on VAT would indicate an asset, an amount that we are going to get repaid. If we'd only had a balance of 280 and no input, then there would have been a liability, an amount we owed. As it is, we've actually got a balance on VAT account of 140, and that is the liability that we have to HMRC. The difference between our purchase VAT and our selling VAT, i.e. On the, on the value added.